impressed with your hit on, on, on uh, Neil, and uh, I won't go any further. So it should be about <coughs> 45 five minutes or so. Yes. Okay. Neil Sheeran, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, uh, you can hear me right at the back? Oh, yes, sir. Mr. Mashin, thank you. Um, Tony kindly invited Clockbox down to spend an evening with you guys back in the summer. Um, so it's taken us a few months to find that availability in the, in the, the diary for the, the, the commitments and so on. So thank you for having us uh, on this, uh, when, on this uh, Tuesday evening in, uh, in December. Most of you might not be familiar with uh, Plotbox. Some of you might have had some exposure to it through some of the local um, projects that we've implemented um, um, here in Dunleary at Deansgate and so on and some further afield. Um, but we'll, we'll start off with uh, giving you a little bit of background on, on the company and, and where it's from and so on. We'll not go too deep into the product though, I will show you some of the stuff that the product can do. Um, I'll, I'll not try and make it technical, um, I'll try and make it easy to understand and, and so on um, and then happily take any questions at, um, at the end. And if I can't give you an answer today, then I'll certainly do that um, in, in, the, in the, uh, the next few days or so. So, um, so we'll just crack on here. So, as Tony mentioned, we're based up in Ballymena, in uh, in the north of the country, um, and our founders, uh, Sean and the owner, are both from a, a little village called Port Port Lano. Um and we're going to show you a little bit today about how we're changing the landscape of cemetery management, uh, both here in Ireland, uh, in GB, and uh, internationally. Um, with a focus on, on the US. But first of all, what is Plotbox? Um, and as Tony said, it's a, it's a cloud-based uh, solution uh, focused on bereavement services, so both the cemetery side and as of this year, the crematorium side as well. Um, and it really enables the, the people that operate those, uh, solution, those facilities to do so to world-class standards. Um, it pulls everything that they need um, from one into one place. That's everything from their bookings diary, uh, their funeral director bookings, uh, the memorial safety inspections, all of their maps and all of their records into one place. So traditionally that have been in various sources. So that's saving them time, that's saving them money, and it's reducing risk. Um, so in a nutshell, problems that have been traditionally very difficult for cemeterians to solve are now possible with these. They're possible at speed um, as they utilize world-leading administration and, and geo rectified mapping modules um, and, and bringing those two together. So I think it's the way we'll tackle this today. Um, we'll assess plot box and so on and um, you know give you some insight through the four main personas in, uh, in, in the organisation. Um, that being your, your, your leader of the business, the CEO or the president or the director of cemeteries, um, your sales or family services counsellor, your finance and administration function, and your operations or grounds management. Um, so we'll take a look at each of those. But before we start on that, um, Plotbox, to give you a bit of a background, Plotbox didn't start with a genius piece of code. It all started with this, the, the survey. Um, and it underpins everything that Plotbox <coughs> is. Um, it's in our DNA um, and this, this fixation with location um, and accuracy um, and linking data uh, and records to a plot uh, is fundamental to where Plotbox brings value to its users. Um, so we're not a software company that do a bit of mapping on the side, um, it, it's a core part of what we do. Um, and by taking the approach in the last few years um, that, 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 um, that, that we have, uh, that Sean and Yana have, um, they've really attracted the, the early adopters, the visionaries of the cemetery world internationally, um, who have believed in what the, the future of what Plotbox can offer, not just both now, but in terms of the way it's developing and so on, and, and what it's going to enable them to do in terms of managing the relationships of all of their stakeholders, be it the public, funeral directors, masons, whoever it might be, um, and, and, and just transforming the way that cemeteries uh, are run and the way they grow. Um, so, um, click on here to our Next slide. This is our. This is most of our team. This was taken in uh, in May this year um, up on the north coast. Um, there are probably fifteen people um, missing from that. Uh, who have some joined, some wasn't, some weren't there on the day. So, growing team. Sean and the owner there in the middle, um, and um, doing um, doing good things with the growth of the company. Most of those people, they're all on LinkedIn, um, and if you would like to connect with any of us, um, we would be delighted to do so, so just feel free to, 
to look us up via Blockbox and then you'll be able to see all the employees um, associated with the company there. Um, so if any of you guys are on that, want any follow up and questions, then, then please just do give us a shout. All of those people, um, all of those people there, they're all working to, to the Plotbox mission. Um, everything that every, every one of those people do, um, we, we, they're each trying to help take away some of the pain in dealing with death. Some of the pain. We can't do everything, you know, obviously. Uh, but, but, but for those that uh, are dealing with death personally and those that serve them. So we're trying to make things less complicated, less burdenous, uh, more sensible, more streamlined. Uh, so that, that the process of dealing with death isn't as, uh, as cumbersome as it might be. And literally that, that mission guides our decision making. Everything that we're doing with the product, it helps to take away some of the pain. And we've got some data to say that yes, um, our users believe in this feature or this, this direction that we're going in. It's very likely that that's, that's going to be done. So I'll show you here this graphic. Um, this is kind of a cartoon map of, uh, of what we're doing at Plotbox and where we've come from. So just bear with me and I'll, I'll, I'll talk you through it. So up in the top right here, we've got a globe. Um, and that's really about our vision. And the, the vision for Blockbox is to become you know, a, 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 lead, a lead platform for connecting all parts of the death industry globally. So way beyond what we do now, to connect every part of the death care industry globally. Um, that's the direction we're heading in. Right now we're, a, um, we're an application, we're a tool for cemeteries to administer and run themselves and help themselves grow. The, the, the vision is to be much wider than that, far more comprehensive on a global scale. So scoot then back down to the bottom left hand side of this visual um, and you've got these four bands, so um, the four coloured blues, there's growth, product and process, customer and people. And each of these blue thumbs, I don't know how quite clear they are from the back of the room maybe, but um, they're, they're, there's little milestones all along the way. And there's a pillar in the middle there, uh, a blue pillar, that's where we are now. And then everything here, the grey little markers on the right hand side, that's the, for the future. So way back at the start, <coughs> we've got Sean and the owner down there in the, the bottom left hand corner of the green section. Um, and they're starting to map a cemetery. And you've got there Sean's brother Kieran on a paper aeroplane flying over the top of them. And literally that refers to the, the, the old days when they used to, the way we used to map cemeteries. Kieran would fly above, cemetery, above cemeteries in like a, well, I'm not quite sure, the, the word escapes me, um, but one of those propelled things with a, the big fan on the back. Microlite. Yes, a microlite, yeah. And he would gingerly find the cemetery, fly over it, lean out at the right moment, and take loads of pictures of the cemetery. And it was just too difficult to, to get right. It's too, <coughs> too, 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 too many variables at play, weather being a big thing around getting that done accurately. So then they moved over to drones um, when, when the time was right. Um, and um, it, it went from there. So there's a, there's a building down there next to them, that's Leona's house. So they started in uh, Sean, uh, in Leona's, um, Leona's mum's garage, converted that. Um, and they had basically a very small team doing many jobs, you know, no role definition, just people that were keen to get stuck in and, and, and get everything done to get the company off the ground. All the sales were driven by the founders, uh, that's natural, they believe in the product, they know the products, they, they're able to articulate it with passion, um, so that's how the income came. In terms of a the budget, they were very bootstrapped, you know, you've got this young startup company that's, you know, managing uh, its, its income, its turnover, its cash flow, um, and they were selling primarily to early adopters, you know, and there's very few of them in the market. They're people that have got the vision and the belief to, to take a punt on what you're doing, this thing that you bring to the market. They're, they're sometimes unproven when you're at that very, very uh, niche stage of the uh, early stage of the business. Uh, the business started um, with, in Ireland um, and then they moved to Britain um, and had some success there. But the real opportunity very early on was, it was in the States and, and we'll, we'll come out on come out, we'll, we'll move on to that in a second. Um, there were very limited processes in the business. They were setting up, you know, the best way for te teams to communicate. They were getting all the business infrastructure right at this point. We were outsourcing the technical development of the product uh, to, to third parties. Uh, that's for a long time now been moved in-house. Um, just far better for us to, to be doing that and managing that ourselves. 
Um, and then they had a, a break and got away to the west coast of the US um, on a program called 500 Startups. And for anybody, um, most of you may, may not have heard of that, but it's, a, it's an extremely prestigious um, competitive program that they were able to, to secure a place on where they could have the, some of the best brains in Silicon Valley from Google, from YouTube, um, and, and, and companies of, of that ilk um, have leaders from those businesses test their, 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 their business strategy, uh, their, 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 their product, their market fit and so on and help them develop and, and grow this business out of uh, what was just an idea at the time. So ben ben benefits a huge amount from that. Then they moved from, um, the, the really developed the, uh, the enterprise SaaS model, so that the idea that this software is a subscription rather than something you just pay for up front and install on your, 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 your system, on, to, on, your, on your premises. So there's a, there's a monthly recurring fee um, which has, uh, uh, brings a lot of benefits for people as well. Um, as Tony mentioned earlier, they completed their uh, A round of funding in uh, spring this year and then you'll see a huge amount of people there at the bottom um, and that just represents the growth of the team. So lots of developers and lots of people um, added to the team from a, uh, a delivery point of view so that we're able to um, implement projects with, uh, with speed and ease and with a predictable time frame. Um, uh, where, and then today that brings us on to the, the middle banner there where we are today. So um, we've just opened our fourth office and that one being in Sydney, Australia. Um, and having completed a, uh, a project with the sixth largest cemetery in the world, uh, Rookwood General Cemetery in, in Sydney. Um, and the, the big focus for the team right now is having brought all these people on the event to invest in, um, in culture um, and in retention so that the, the business is able to keep hold of the, the people that needs to carry on growing. So the future then, moving on to the right hand side where these grey dots are, um, we, we need to prove our, our, our sales model in each territory, um, attain scalable delivery, become the industry de facto, so the standard, the, the, the aspiration for what cemetery uh, management looks like. Um, we want to extend to a self-serve model so that smaller cemeteries, graveyards, churches, uh, they're able to buy into plot box in ways that they might be a little bit cost prohibitive at the moment. So, you know, you can buy over the internet, upload your own put your own data in, do your own, set up your own map, all this kind of thing. Um, so there's a little bit of work to do before we get to that. Um, uh, develop our customer success culture so that once people have bought Plotbox that we're ensuring that they're getting value from it and not just one-time purchases, that they continue to um, grow their business, operate you know, without, without as much risk and um, operate efficiently and then they renew and they become um, long-time supporters. So, um, ensuring customer success is a, a big focus for us. And then back onto people, we want to become the, the, the best place to work. Um, we've got big aspirations <coughs> for what that means for us in, in Ireland in terms of um, attracting people and, and being a place where people can say, yeah, I'm proud to work there. Um, and then Plotbox is a, a platform all the way back up to where we started, um, connecting all parts of the death care industry globally. Um, and that you know, goes into um, artificial intelligence, robotics, um, things that right now you can, you know, you can only just, you, you can't imagine in some instances what's, what's coming down the line. So there's a graphical snapshot of the, the, the journey over the last few years, um, all starting with Sean and the owner in the mum's garage to where we are now, uh, a team of uh, probably about 55 people um, and with plenty of, of growth to come. So. I'll move on. Um, next slide. So gra graphically um, based, as I've mentioned, first office um, in Ballymena, just north of Belfast. First enterprise customers were one on the with the Archdiocese of San Francisco in California, um, and the Diocese of Orange, and the Diocese of uh, Phoenix now, the Diocese of Monterey. Um, so we, we, we had a, this is where on the back of the, the relationships and the network that were built out on, in, in the US where those first customers opened. So we had a, a, an office there to, to support their implementation. As then the team grew, we built out an office in Boston and scaled up our sales team and our marketing effort. And that's where that commercial, commercial team is really led from. And then in Austin, Texas, this is our support hub, um, which is where we operate the round the support for, um, for, for our, all of our users globally. And then, as I mentioned there, our fourth office um, in Sydney, Australia right now, which is our, the latest market that we're moving into. So when you consider all those time zones, 
it's really a 24-hour operation. There's not a moment of the day where there isn't somebody in the world getting value from the product uh, and being supported by our team, whether that's in, in Value Mean of the US uh, or, or Australia. Um, if this uh, works, I'm going to play. It's connected. I'm going to play a short video. Running a cemetery or crematorium is a huge challenge, not helped by critical information often being fragmented between spreadsheets and paper, but also because many organizations are doing their best to make outdated IT systems work for them in the modern world. Cemeterians often tell us their role is like that of a detective, just to carry out routine tasks, sifting through multiple sources of information before they're even able to start the important work of supporting the families they serve. Enter Plotbox, best practice in cemetery and crematorium management. Plotbox is the only integrated software and mapping solution that provides an intuitive user experience by bringing all cemetery operations into one place, like pre-need sales, mapping, finance, and a whole host of tools and services designed to work with you, not against you. We can even store digital copies of your existing paper records within Plotbox. For the first time, all of your information truly is in one place. So regardless of your organization's size, there's a customized plot box package to suit your needs. By centralizing data into one platform, Plotbox can save up to 78% in operational efficiencies. Not only that, there are many ways that Plotbox can help you increase revenue. For instance, Family service counselors can sell on the go from any location with live inventory data on any device. Setting Plotbox apart, we offer the only verified mapping solution with accuracy up to one inch. That's a true integrated GPS mapping solution that delivers a forensic audit of your inventory, can identify previously unknown and unsold plots, gives visibility of your real-time inventory status to all of your team, and removes the worry of double selling plots. Our advanced finance module gives you the freedom to create the reports you need. For example, accounts receivable, GL, counselor sales and commissions, inventory, and deferred revenue are all literally at the touch of a button and are all integrated with your own finance package. Public access to deceased records is delivered via integration with our sister website Ever After, which creates several options for lead generation and new revenue streams. Many of the United States' largest cemetery organizations have adopted Plotbox and transformed their operation, including some of the largest archdioceses, dioceses, and private organizations who have awarded Plotbox 5 out of 5 stars in reviews. So if you're aspiring to implement industry best practice, visit plotbox.io to learn more and speak with a local product expert today. So that, I hope, gives you a, uh, uh, an overview of the, the, the scope of the product. Um, as I said, we're going to look at the, um, uh, the, the, the way it functions through the eyes of our our main persona. So this is Monica, she's the uh, Director of Cemeteries at the Archdiocese of San Francisco. Um, and um, tr tr traditionally Monica is dealing with, um, and, and all cemeteries, uh, be it Deansgate down the road, um, the guys in Carlo or across in GB, um, the, the, the similarities are so, are so common. Um, they're all struggling with data that's in various siloed systems, um, be that index cards, DOS systems, ledger books, Excel, paper maps, whatever it might be. So people like Monica, they want everything in one place with data they can trust. She wants that data in real time. Um, in the US, they're very commercially driven, so they sell a lot of plots pre-need. Uh, they have a lot of the big sales teams um, selling um, with aggressive targets and so on. So sales reports are important to them. The cat salesperson's activity, how many phone calls they're making, how many appointments they're doing, that kind of thing. Uh, they want to be able to look at their pipeline in terms of revenue that's going to be coming in in the months ahead. Um, um, and in, and in, in the markets where lot sales are done pretty neat, she needs visibility of the demographics of her local community. So um, this is a Catholic cemetery, uh, but other cemeteries that we sell to 
uh, they'd have sections for all different sorts of faiths and so on. And you know, if there's if we're not winning sales and selling plots in, in from one community, we need to establish what it is about our business that we need to you know how do we engage better with certain communities. Um, and all of that can be done through plot box, through segmenting your market, and uh, having your, your your data in your customer in your CRM. So if Monica logs onto the system, um, the first thing she sees is a configurable, configurable dashboard. So what this really means is that depending on your role, you can choose the information that comes up straight away on your screen. Um, so she's a she's in charge of the whole of the organisation. So right here, she's going to want to see um, um, the amount of renewals. The, deeds that are expiring next month, um, she's going to want to see finance, um, the outstanding invoices and so on, the number of plots they've got on hold, the burials that are happening today, the events that, and the work orders that still need completion and so on. Um, there can be, she can look at a few more direct booking requests re requiring confirmation in the booking diary, um, she can review work permit requests and that's com completely configurable to the, to the type of role that she has. And then a salesperson would have a different one, and, and uh, a operations person would have a different one. So, as soon as you log in, you're able to see the most important things that relate to relate to your role. So this probably looks quite familiar. Um, there's, you know, the ledger books. They're uh, they're common in, in, in most cemetery organisations. Um, and to look up records, um, a lot of people in a lot of cemeteries are spending time accessing data. In this way, it's time-consuming. There are errors there. Uh, it can be hard to find the data. Um, what Monica now has is a, a visual uh, representation of all of that data, um, and uh, that's not that's available in a list and a, and, a, and a visual, as I say. So, using the filters in Blockbox, she's able <coughs> to then refine that data. Uh, so, say she gets a genealogy request, or the guys at Deansgate get a genealogy request, they're going to be able to literally go to this screen and say, show me all the Johns or all the Patricks um, who died or were interred in da 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 or um, who, whose, whose surname was Riley or whatever it might be. Um, and then you're going to get a, a geographical location and a list uh, location of all the data that relates to those records. So I know that some of our cemeteries have been, um, their genealogy requests sometimes can take an hour, sometimes they take five minutes. Sometimes it can take a day, depending on the, the quality of the data and where that data is held. If it's down the stairs in deep vaults and needs, you know, cupboards that have gone through to find the right ledgers and so on, that's a huge undertaking. Once you've had your your, your data migration from um, and, your, and, your, and your transcriptions done, and anything that you might need, um, and, and that data verified in Blockbox, ge genealogy request should be taken no more than one minute. So you, if you if you consider how many you know these guys are doing uh, during the course of a year. That's hours and hours and hours, possibly weeks of time saved um, because your, your data is well organised and, and in a digital format. Okay, so um, let me show you then this, this heat map. We'll look at this screen a couple of times during, during the talk. Um, Plotbox, um, what Plotbox is more than just software, it, it's, a, it's a forensic audit of your, of your data and your inventory. That means that we're not just bringing across data and records and burial records and, and so on. We're cleaning that up with you as it comes across into Blockbox. So we're validating the good and we're identifying problem records. Uh, we're disqualifying, disqualifying inventory that you don't have, that you think you do. Um, nobody wants to sell it block twice. Um, that happens, unfortunately. Um, and it costs people a lot of money and it costs people a lot of distress. Um, so that's a big part of what we try to avoid. Um, on that note, the, the reverse happens as well, um, where we are we're giving giving um, inventory back to cemeteries, inventory they didn't know they had because the maps are so old, they're so uh, they're not to scale, they're inaccurate, they might be damaged or you know tipexed over the years and so on. It's easy over a period of time for <coughs> to really become hard to read and for, for inventory for plots to get lost. So we just did a mapping project with um, Inglewood Park Cemetery in Los Angeles. Um, and we have literally handed back to them $5 million of inventory of plots that they didn't know they had. And this has all been verified by them. This isn't us just saying, we think there's one there, we think there's one there, let's put a figure up. These guys are charging over $10,000 for a plot. 
and we're finding two and a half to three lots per acre. And it's a simple math equation. You, you know, you, you, you just multiply that up, um, and they've accepted five million pounds back in. So now they can go and spend, now they can go and sell uh, a ton of plots that they just didn't know they had because they've invested in this data audit. Um, so they're not just bringing across any data and putting it into plot box, but having us work with them to check with our guys on the ground. In the same way the guys did at uh, Deansgate, uh, we, uh, we, we did a similar process with those guys as well. So this, uh, this, this graphic here then is going to show you then it's colour coded, a lot of these dots, each dot represents a plot, uh, a lot of them are yellow, a lot of them are blue, a lot of them are green and there's a couple of reds in there as well. So the red ones are the plots that are full, so in this location, this is San, uh, San Francisco, they do, uh, there's two burials per plot and you can see those are the ones that are full. You can see the ones that are partial, they're the yellow ones, it means there's one person in there or one, or one, one internment. Um, the empty ones are blue, uh, the ones that are on hold are orange, so there's a couple in there that are orange, and that means that a, cem a cemetery and sales counsellor is uh, speaking to a family and just wants to reserve the plot in case it's sold to somebody else in the, in the meantime. And then the, the available ones, which are uh, completely empty, are, uh, are green. As that just helps everybody in the organisation know what they're dealing with, um, and we can't tell how that helps the, uh, the, the, sales, the salespeople. It's worth saying, saying at this point for uh, the elimination of any doubt, all of this stuff, all of this, this visual, every plot here is georectified to, to an exact longitude and latitude accurate to one inch. There is no use of satellite maps here. This is not Google. Uh, this, is, this is our own drone map with um, georectified locations. Um, Google, every time that thing updates and the, they redraw, they republish the map, the map can move by sometimes up to 50 feet and Google will even tell you themselves while well, it's good to find the local pub or whatever it might be to find for, for, for very specific very accurate use it's, it's not fit for purpose so that's a big differentiator in terms of where plot box is bringing value to, to cemeteries so what Monica will do next um, she wants to see how much money the business is making and where it's coming from uh, this is a sales by councillor report and this will just outline who's selling what, in what facility, at what rate. Um, she can break that down by um, the, the type of sales that they are, whether they're plots, memorials, um, whatever it might be. Um, so there's a, there's, a, there's a good business uh, development uh, angle on that as well. Um, as well as that, for the personal development of our staff, so let's say that we've got one sales councillor who's able to get a lot of appointments but they're not actually getting many sales. It can help her give you know business intelligence around the development needs for staff. So maybe there's some training needing on closing sales and so on. And I know sales is a, a not, not a big part of maybe what we're used to in, in Britain and Ireland, um, but I think in terms of uh, the US and Australia, it's a, it's a major part of the way cemeteries operate. Uh, and culturally, they're, they're, they're very much into the pre need pre planning side of things um, more than we are, which is why we're <coughs> a lot of the product you'll notice is. Uh, is built around um, uh, sales. So this is Suzanne, she's our uh, finance controller, she controls the money, she administers all the paperwork and so on, um, and she tends to be constantly frustrated um, in, in the old world um, with reconciling data sources. So she might have a system for, um, uh, for sales, another one for commissions, um, another one for something else and it's just very very difficult and every month she has to run these audits and report to the board um, and the sales teams are off offering prices that are from an old price list and payment plans that are unauthorised and she can't make, she can't effectively run the finance uh, system because there's too many ways for the wrong terms or the wrong prices to be uh, find their way out into the public. Um, so calculating all that can be a long and messy affair, so she just needs a, a one system that acts uh, integrated across sales, across inventory and across receivables and that all needs to be seamless. So that's what, that's what she does there. Um, it's not something we do here and I'm not um, an expert in this, you guys will know much better than I. Um, but in terms of the, um, uh, I, I believe in the US they, they have Perpetual care. I, I believe I could be wrong. I, th I believe here we have is it 100 year or 99 year leases on, on plots. I could be wrong. So keep me right. If that's incorrect. Incorrect. Yeah. Incorrect. No. 
Yeah. What, so what do we have? Green. Uh, I'm very can only talk for Glass Seven. Right. Uh, they do not. We we renew our. They don't. No. Right. Okay. Okay. So um, uh, so th thank you for that. And uh, so one of the things that we've just um, implemented <coughs> um, for the Australian market, they'll renew after 50 years. So the plot needs. Um, you know, um, it can be effectively resold or released to the same family or resold to somebody completely new. So uh, we're updating the system there um, into, to meet the, the growing international needs and all the legislations from, from different sides of the globe. Um, so that's what we're doing there um, yeah, in terms of uh, that work. So on the sales side, uh, this guy's name is Ryan. He's the head of uh, sales or family services at, at the Archdiocese of San Francisco. Um, he, uh, he has to meet pre-need targets, pre-need sales targets, and, but his big challenge is he spends a lot of time creating contracts, um, paperwork, um, to, to complete these sales. So a lot of time sitting down in front of bereaved families, <coughs> asking them for lots of information, when, when maybe they've already given this information over to somebody else in the organisation uh, in, in another meeting. It's a very manual, laborious process here. So. To do his job effectively, he needs to be able to add products and services to a contract uh, with ease. Um, he needs to arrange payment schedules, um, and importantly for finance, use only the, fine, the fees and the plans uh, that they have approved. Um, without a finance module, the, any charges can be offered and agreed, um, and the, the, the ultimately the business or the cemetery uh, starts to lose revenue. Um, um, Plotbox helps eradicate some of that risk and um, helps keep uh, the balance of the uh, relationships between sales and finance um, more, home, more harm, home, harmonious. <coughs> um, like Monica and everybody, uh, with the, the map is uh, fundamental to Ryan and, and a, a huge a, a, to, to other people in the, in the business. Um, now, a lot of these organisations, they'll sell out on site, they'll sell plots out in the cemetery grounds, they'll sell plots away in, inside other people's homes. Some of these guys have got sales teams literally of 200 sales counsellors that, that walk the streets of Los Angeles and San Francisco doing door-to-door -door sales selling plots. It's a very culturally common thing to do. Um, so what we help them do <coughs> is give them all the information on iPads that they need to go and prospect and to um, come up with a pre-planning package for, for their clients um, and having live inventory data is critical to that. So if you didn't know what plots you had, it's hard to know what you can sell and so you don't want to avoid, you know, you want to avoid double selling and all that kind of stuff. You also want to avoid sitting there in front of the in front of the customer, ringing the office, have them check a plot and then something, you know, that can take an hour by the time somebody goes out, checks a plot, comes back. And, um, so having everything digitised and inside the system with a, a live status is a, is a huge um, uh, a, a huge bonus um, for, 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 for those guys. So if you think about now what we've found with Inglewood Park Cemetery um, in Los Angeles, so we handed them back $5 million worth of inventory. So let's say that's the section where a lot of that came from. There's now a load of plots here which we've now got for sale which we didn't know were for sale. Somebody like Ryan, who's in sales, he's then able to run a report of all the names of all the families in this section and then say, okay, this is, um, um, the, these guys are um, related to this family and this family and I'm going to do an email campaign, I'm going to do a telephone campaign and I'm going to contact the relatives of all of these families and say, we've got newly discovered inventory would you like to pre-plan and pre-secure your plot in a location that's close to your family? That might not have been possible in the past. So from Ryan's point of view, uh, having this kind of data helps him meet his targets, it helps the community then um, arguably get made, possibly things that they, um, you know, spots or locations that they might have not been able to in the past. Let's say they then bring somebody onto the site um, and there, um, whether that's a, a regular, you know, a walk-in or a, a telephone genealogy request, or one of those appointments that Ryan had booked there, and, and you know somebody's coming to look at the property, um, the, the office are able then to give um, a, a print off, uh, come to the office, take a print off. The family, if they want, they can be shown round by somebody at the cemetery, 
or be take, take themselves off themselves and uh, walk around. So you've got a pin on the map here um, indicating uh, the plot in question. So you've got a big aerial view and you've got the office just down the road. So you know if you come out of the office, you walk down there, it's the second turning on the left. And then about halfway up, there's the plot and you can see it's next to the tree. So that's the, the overall, the, the high level view. Um, and then you can get even closer in here um, with a, a close up and then some data there around um, the, and this would have happened at Deansgate as well, um, some, some data around there, around the, the, the record in, in question with a photograph of the headstone. So you're able to see what you're looking for when you're out on site. Um, and that goes for mobile as well. I'll show you the mobile app um, in, a, in, a, in a few moments, um, but that will have water grave directions. So you'll be able to hold your, mat, hold your, hold your phone in your hand and literally be guided to the exact plot um, from either within the cemetery or from way or outside of the cemetery. Uh, you, you could have your, your, your phone take you to a plot in uh, a cemetery in Belfast from here, uh, right to the very spot um, with, it, with uh, the plot box app, uh, with, the, with, the public, with the public site. Okay, so the, the contracts have then be created in Plotbox. Um, so again, <coughs> it's this idea of uh, everything being inside Plotbox um, and not jumping between the various systems. So it's one place for the whole cemetery operations and one source of truth. Um, and uh, finance is a big part of that. So that's uh, uh, probably where we'll, we'll leave off with, uh, uh, with Ryan. Um, and if then we then move over to operations so this is John um, John is uh, our operations manager and again the mapping piece is fundamental to his work so John and his team they need to track service requests so they need to know what burials are happening um, each day they need to come out and dig the plots um, they need to know what the, the timing of those so they can do other work and other you know not be close to where um, burials are happening that kind of thing they need to implement work orders so maybe there's a storm and there's a branch from a tree that's damaged that needs taken care of um, maybe there, there, there could be there, there, any kind of maintenance work on the site, um, so they can plan that around um, what's happening uh, elsewhere with, with, uh, with burials. Um, if he's working on the, the development of inventory, so de planning or digging it, um, planning out new uh, new plots, um, he can look at various layers on the map. It might be that on the map there's a, an <coughs> irrigation map, electrical wires on the map. Um, all of those types of maps can go into plot box and be overlaid so that depending on the type of work that you're doing in the cemetery you can see you know again you've got this one source of truth for everything that's going on there so from an operational point of view uh, you're not dealing again with various sources of, uh, of data everything's there for, for everybody to see um, and as I say even for your historical maps and your historical data your ledgers and so on there's a docs module in plot box and and everything can come into Plotbox. So you, if you've got historical maps that you really want to preserve, um, and you know, you'll do your best to do that in the real world, but um, let, you can get those scanned and imported into Plotbox. So even though with your new state-of-the-art digital map, you've then got an option to then just click a button and then see your, your historical map, your physical map, inside Plotbox in terms of an you know, electronic version. So it, you move into, into the, the, you know, the digital space doesn't mean that you completely have to um, say goodbye to your historical records because there's a lot of value in, in, in keeping those as, uh, in, in lots of ways as well. So we'll have a look here at um, uh, the, one of these plots here. So I'm just going to flick between these two graphics. So this is um, a site in uh, California. Uh, and you can see that section at the top right there um, was being developed. So it wasn't there on the first drone flight that we did. There's a, probably about a four or five year gap between these two drone flights. And you can see in the time that that's passed, they've developed out that top right hand section. Um, and the point here is um, where, where reuse occurs. You could have that section there at the top. Um, in, this will happen in Australia, for instance. You could have that section at the top where an entire section or a lot of a section um, becomes um, out of lease, so beyond the 50 year lease that they have. So decomposition should have taken place, uh, there's been a lot of checks around making sure that that's all happened. If that's the case then they legally have the ability to um, reuse that plot and to, to 
change its use, if you like. So they might want to put in a memorial garden here, or they might want to put in a columbarium or a mausoleum or whatever it might be, or arrange the graves and the plots in a, in a different way. But having the, the, the drone map flown, the, the drone flown at different stages, you've always got that historical log of what the what <coughs> things used to look like. Um, and that goes for genealogy as well. So when somebody's looking up a genealogy request, um, from maybe from uh, for somebody in Australia uh, whose family are from here um, and they, their plot has been reused, their name will still appear on our public search site, you'll still be able to find the person because of its sensitive nature, i.e. that there's been a reuse happened, we will not show you a location, but we'll give you instructions to find the cemetery directly and ask for that specific information. And then when the time is right, when the cemetery have verified who you are, they'll then be able to flip back to this old map, to, to the previous drone map, map, and say, there's been a reuse, you know, that plot, you know, this is the legislation here, um, we, we, we did all our checks and, and so on to, to, to find and offer the extension of a lease. We were unsuccessful yeah. in doing that. But here's where that plot was. Here's where that person was interred. Um, so you've always got that, that historical visual reference as well for what, the, what things look like um, uh, from a historical point of view. Um, so from a work order's point of view, so we're talking about getting work done on the cemetery. So these are your operations teams. Um, these guys are out strimming, they're digging plots, <coughs> they're doing everything that they need to do to, to keep the, the maintenance and the operation uh, functional. They are going to want to manage their, manage their workload through uh, the, the work orders module. So the, the directors of the cemeteries, their managers, John, Monica, they can assign work to um, their, their operations people inside Plotbox and have a log of its status. So here you've got a bar chart, it, that can be a pie chart, it can be a line graph, it can be whatever you want it to be. Um, and you can see the status there of things, jobs that are in draft, jobs that are uh, open, ones that are in progress and ones that are complete. And you'll be able to run reports as to who, who's, you know, who's getting through the work um, in a timely manner, who's still got jobs um, that are well overdue, what jobs are we marked to urgent that aren't getting done this kind of stuff. So you're always a able to see um, the real-time status of what's going on in the cemetery and not be kind of left in the dark, as in the operations team or over the other side of the cemetery. It's hard to communicate with them. They never pick up the phone. I don't know what's going on. There's all that kind of stuff going on. Inside plot box, it's one source of truth and everything's there um, for everybody um, um, uh, in, in, in one place. So uh, I will show you ever after. So this, some of you guys might have used this in uh, in uh, Deansgate um, and in uh, others that are, are around, there, there's two here locally. Uh, if anybody's from um, a bit of a way away from here, but there's a, another customer of ours in Carlo, and there's several in the north of Ireland. Um, but Ever After is our public interface. Um, so you're met with the home screen here, and you can do a quick search of deceased records there, first name, last name, uh, country, and cemetery name if you know it, and then you can you can run a search. So, just for the purposes of this, um, I show I did just because it would throw up big numbers. I searched John Smith, and um, you can see here that there's a lot of these guys um, in the UK and Ireland. There's a lot of them also in the US, and we, as I say, as we just opened on the east coast of Australia, there's a bunch of them uh, interred there as well. And what you'll be able to do is hover over those. Um, uh, those, those yellow circles and then drill, be able to drill down specifically into, into each cemetery um, and find um, uh, the records that you're seeking. I'll show you what that looks like on uh, mobile. So this is Dunleary County Council's um, uh, mobile site. Um, just a screenshot taken from my own phone. So you'll have their deceased um, first name, surname, cemetery name if you know it, and then you'll be able to search. And what comes next is, um, so I've just searched the name Riley, and I'm just, I'm just saying, oh gosh, I, can't, you know, I, I wasn't sure of the first name for whatever reason, so I've just searched Riley, um, and um, I'm getting a number of results here, um, and they're all listed um, way down the page here, and I can scroll through and, and um, um, uh, um, identify the, the, the record that I'm looking for. 
If I then click um, into here, um, um, I'm going to then see in Dean's Grange all of the um, uh, Rileys, anybody with Riley in their name, um, or, um, or if it was part of the name, so if it was O'Reilly, that still will turn the result. Um, and then I'm able to then identify the record that I need there, and I believe that's the right one. I'm looking for George Riley, I can see there without having to pay or anything, I can see that it's age 65 and the date of death and so on. And at this point, this is where I'm able to then uh, get full information, more information from uh, from the system on him, and I'm able to then click view full information. All, all that you ask for then is just to become a member, enter your email address, um, and then verify your account, and that will give you access to the system. Um, and um, But there's no payment, that, that's all free. Where we're going to take this in the future is that um, you know globalisation is happening and and you know it's taking people all over the world. Let's say we've, we're starting to have relatives in, in all kinds of different places of the globe. This this system is going to allow us to um, send flowers, um, which you can do online now or by telephone anywhere. But the problem is for cemeteries, <coughs> they get flowers delivered and they're left at the desk at the front desk. That can sometimes take them hours to find the right plot if the data is in a bad bad way and then from the cemetery point of view they're spending a lot of man hours digging through records trying to put these flowers so it's safe to have flowers delivered directly to the plot because we know the plot locations we're saving the cemetery a lot of time and then from the customer service point of view we're able to lay service standards because the customer then gets a photograph of the, the flowers um, left on the grave on a specific grave um, in, uh, in, each, um, in each instance, so they can see that they've been delivered to ex exactly the right spot. So that will probably bring me through to the point where uh, I'll hand over to you guys for questions. Um, I think at several points during that I said Dean's Gate instead of Dean's Grange. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, if yeah, apologies. Um, and uh, yeah, if I, as I say, if I can't take. Um, if I can't answer anything right now, I'll make sure I get an answer for you guys next week. Thank you very, very much. That was very, very informative. <laughs> You're a lot wiser now about the, the cemetery business.